Right here in the little black box. 400 feet of the worst fire this state's ever seen. In pretty close, huh? Close. You could have toasted marshmallows. Hi, Les. You better get that film, The Newsreel Guy, P.T. It's got to be developing on the air for the 6 o'clock show. Hi, right, boss. How'd they go? No problems. Flew like a bird. Some bird. Pretty bad, huh? Uh-huh. A thousand acres of timber, not a stick left. You saw guys working until they dropped. They finally put it out, though. How did it get started? Oh, the same old way. Somebody threw a cigarette from a car or forgot to put out a campfire. They never learned. Rough. Well, got to get going. I'm beat. Yeah, me too. Uh, six hours over a fire is enough to knock anybody out. I'll tell you what, let's get cleaned up. I'll blow you the biggest hamburger in town. You got a deal. Oh, Chuck. Yeah? Before you knock off, there's a guy in the office waiting to see you. What do you want? Didn't say. Said he'd wait you got back. And wait nearly two hours. Okay. If it's another fire, turn it down. You guys are raising blisters on my paint job. Oh, you better put a hold in that hamburger, P.T., until we find out what he wants. Mr. Martin. That's right. My name is Stevens. Emmett Stevens. Glad to know you. This is P.T. Moore. How, How are you? How do you do? What can we do for you? Well, it's about my father-in-law. He's gone and done it again. What's he done? What's he done? He was due back Sunday morning at 7 o'clock to open the store, and here it is Thursday, and I haven't heard a word from him. I'm a little bit confused, Mr. Stevens. Oh, I have a drugstore up near Bakersfield. Nothing fancy, you understand. I'm not a rich man. But I do well enough. Well, everything was going just fine until suddenly uranium. Yes, I've been reading about it. Oh, the newspapers don't tell half the story. Grocery clerks, bank tellers, stenographers, and mothers of their little children all up on the hills prospecting. It's like the gold rush days all over again. Sounds exciting. Exciting. It's a fever. It's a disease. And the one that's got it the worst is my father-in-law. But he's been that way all his life. It cost me $300 to get him back from Alaska. He was after gold that time. Then there was oil in Texas. He thought he could find it with a divining rod contraption that he'd rigged up. That cost me 250. Then there was silver and copper and diamonds and a few other things I'd prefer to forget. He's a dreamer, Mr. Martin, just a dreamer. He's been looking for a pot of gold all his life. And the old fool's never found a thing and he never will. What's your problem, Mr. Stevens? You think he's lost? That's right. Well, where do you think he is? I don't know. He's somewhere up in the hills. All I know is he burst into my store last week and he handed me this piece of rock. And he was so excited he could hardly talk. He rushed in and he took two days' provisions and he rushed right out again to go and stake his claim. Well, that was five days ago and I haven't heard a word from him since. Maybe he's still out prospecting. Uh, not Walt, not Walt Elliott. He wouldn't spend three extra minutes without food, let alone three days. Mr. Martin, he's an old fool with a wild dream and this time it's gotten him into trouble. I know it. Here they are. Good. You planning on doing a little uranium hunting yourself? Nope. Maybe you figure Elliot's radioactive. Nope. Look, Chief Eagle Feather, I'm not asking you to show me your company books or to tell me who you were out with last night. All I want to know is why I had to chase all over town for this gear. For a couple of reasons. First of all, I'm just plain curious to know if the old man really hit it. Secondly, it could help us to find him. What do you mean? If he really struck uranium, it'll show on the scintillator. What's more, it'll show us how strong his strike is. Once we know how strong his strike is, we could go out and try to pick up his vein in the mountain. Oh, in other words, if we pick up his vein, Elliot shouldn't be too far away, is that it? That's it. Let's see if he hit the jackpot. higher than government standards. Well, there's one thing we can be sure of. What's that? If we find him, Stevens is going to be a lot nicer to him from now on. How come? Well, Stevens is a guy with a lot of respect for a buck. And we're going to be bringing back one of the richest father-in-laws in this country.
get a PT. Could be any time now. Listen, you wouldn't look too good either if you've been lost out here for five days. What do you want? I want to talk to you. That one was high. Well, hold still and the next one might be in the right place. State your business. No need to get tough about it, mister. Plenty of need. We're not looking to entertain any visitors, and this claim's been staked. We're not jumping your claim, mister. That's so. Just hold it right there while we make sure. Joe, take a look. They're lying, Will. They got a scintillator and a whole mess of gear. They must have picked up our vein from the air and come down to stake it. We picked up your vein, all right, but we didn't come down to stake it. We came down because we thought he was the man we were looking for. And you're looking for? You're looking for somebody? That's right, an old prospector named Walt Elliott. We thought your partner might be him. Well, Joe ain't your man. He's my helper. We're plumbers back in Victorville. His name is Slade. I'm Will Carter. I ain't lost, and he ain't neither. Now, you can do us a favor, bud. Just get off of our claim. We got a lot of work to do. And you're sure you never saw a man about 60 out prospecting alone? We ain't seen nobody, and we ain't looking for nobody. Too many people in these hills as it is. I got a feeling if it was you, You'd be crying louder than anybody for help. Let me tell you something, buddy. Anybody needs help shouldn't be out in these hills. There's money in the ground out here. Money in the cracks and the rocks, and it's all up for grabs. Any man can't take care of himself. Ought to be home sitting by the fire, not out prospecting. Now get lost. Come on, Pete. kind of worried, Will. We should have gone back three days ago and not fooled around with a second claim. They might find him and... And what? And what? You know and what. 
Listen, Will, I didn't come out here to kill nobody. I just took a little flyer to try to strike it rich. Listen to me, Joe. But I didn't come out into these hills planning to kill nobody. That was your idea. It Will is. you listen to me? We struck it rich, didn't we? And we didn't kill nobody. If a man can't take care of himself, that's not our fault. But they might find him. They might find Elliot. All right, they ain't gonna find him. We won't let him. You and me. Come on, get the gear. Keep that switch on the high position. Let's not miss anything. Okay. Very toward the canyon wall. I'm getting a little action there. We're getting warmer, Chuck. Much warmer. 18. You Walt Elliot? Yeah. I'm Chuck Martin. Your son-in-law sent us out to look for you. Sure am glad to see you. Thought I was done for. What happened? I got caught in a rock slide while I was mapping my claim. Can't move my leg. Been lying here for three days. Take it easy. Hey, I said slow. You're a rich man now. You want to live to enjoy it, don't you? Ain't rich no more. I was rich for about a day, but no more. How do you mean? Two men, they... They took my map. Were they in a jeep? That's right. Did you see them? Yeah. They took a shot at us a little while ago. What happened? I'd been caught under this rock for about a day when they drove up. They had a Geiger with them. They checked the rocks before they came near me. Didn't take no genius to find out the ground's all loaded with uranium. They searched me, they took my map, and then they just drove off and left me. You fellas think you can get me out of here? Sure, we'll get you out of here, Mr. Elliot. Walt. Yes, Walt's fine. Sure, Walt, we'll get you out of here. Okay. He's caught in there pretty tight. We roll it off? Try it. Okay, now. We're gonna need help, Chuck. No, there's no time. He doesn't look so good. Think we can fly it off? I mean, tie a rope around it and pull it off of the copter? No, you'd pull the bottom out of that ship before you could move this rock. Say, we could use a plane, though. We still have that axe? Sure, it's in with a heavy gear. You stay with Walt, I'll be right back. Where are you going? Find something big enough to move this rock.
How you doing? I'll be doing fine, boy, if you could just get some of this real estate I used to own off me. We'll get it off. You just hang on. I've been hanging on for three days. I'd like to try something else for a while. Funny thing. All my life long, I dreamed about hitting the pay dirt, striking it rich. Now when I finally did, I let somebody take it away from me like I was a babe in a It wasn't your fault, Walt. Not much you could do under this rock. It'll make no difference whose fault it was, boy. That's the first thing you gotta learn. It's results that count. That's what Emmett always says. You met Emmett, didn't you? Uh-huh. And you know what I mean. I guess he told you about having to bail me out of Alaska and Texas and a couple other places. Yeah, he, he told us. Well, let me tell you something. Working in that store, I paid Emmett back for everything he ever done for me. And what's more, I wouldn't trade the memories of the good times I've had in those places for all the pills on Emmett's shelves. No, sir. I sure would have liked it, though, if I could have walked up to him and said, Emmett, my boy, I... Shook my last milkshake and delivered my last corn plaster. Yeah, and I could have done it, too, if I hadn't let those fellas catch me like I was a tenderfoot. But this is your claim, Walt. Chuck and I can testify that you were here first. That's nice of you, son, but it wouldn't do no good. The law says whoever files first on the land owns it. The government can't be worrying about what happens in the mountains a hundred miles from nowhere. Hey, here comes your partner. over the ridge. I couldn't find anything bigger. We'll either have to do it with this or not at all. Okay, that's it. Well, the bronze are ready. The brains are. Okay, let's give it a go. Think it'll work? We'll both know in about five minutes. We're all ready just in tight. I ain't going no place, boy. One thing, Walt. I have to hold the log in place. When Chuck brings the plane down, the rock lifts, you start moving, okay? You just move that rock, boy. It doesn't look too good to me. It would if you hadn't seen it for three days. We'd better get you out of here fast. How you doing, Walt? I'm fine. That was a nice piece of flying, boy. Sure do, thank you. You don't have to thank us. We gotta get you to the hospital fast. Oh, oh, hold on there, Chuck. The hospital isn't where I was planning to go. What are you talking about? Uh, I, you said those fellows were still in the hills. I, I gotta try to find them. You're in no shape to find anything right now except a hospital bed, and that's where you're going. I got a right to try to get my property back. 
Now, look, Walt, you've been out here for three days. You need medical attention, and I promised your son-in-law I'd get you back as soon as we found you. Did he tell you what you were bringing me back to? What do you mean? Did he tell you just as soon as my leg's a little better, he'll have me back sweeping floors, jerking sodas, polishing glasses, running errands, just like he did before? I've been prospecting for 40 years, Chuck. Working and looking for my pot of gold, but I never found it. There's always a fellow on the other side of the valley. Up the river away is the claim next to mine. But now I've hit it, I can't let him take it away from me without trying to get it back. Walt, I don't know. I'm just an old man, Chuck, with a busted foot. I won't get a chance to do it again. What do you think, P.T.? Well, I'll I... tell you what he thinks. He thinks, let's find those fellas and give Walt Elliott a chance to turn himself from a nobody into a somebody. That's what I think, Chuck. Okay, let's go. <laughs>
talk that. Anything wrong with him? A few months in jail won't cure. Here it is. Walt's plane, man. Yeah, this is it. Well, there's nothing left to do but notify the state police. I sure do, thank you. How does it feel to be a rich man, Walt? Don't give me time to get used to it. My leg's throbbing like I was a poor man. We'll have you in the hospital in about 20 minutes. Ellen will probably be there. You mean he's heard about my strike already? Good news travels fast. It sure does. Uh, one thing, though, he's got a big surprise coming to him. What's that? This is one time I'll be able to pay my own way back home. <laughs>